and sorry for keeping you waiting, friends. We are sitting fires tonight. I thought this would be romantic for all parties involved. Drink a uh, homemade kombucha that shall be whipped up for me. This stuff is uh, black cherry, I think. Good stuff. Uh, real quick, guys, before we get going, tonight's video is sponsored by Olight. Olight sent us a couple of sponsors, and, and I know, or sorry, Olight sent us a couple of uh, lights for the sponsorship. We've got the PL, uh, PL Pro Valkyrie, the Warrior X Pro, which this thing is my this thing is my absolute favorite on the farm whenever i go outside of this thing lights up everything uh, and i know how you guys love when i tell you about uh, olight sales the night before so guess what there's an olight sale tomorrow uh, there will be a link in the description below but uh, olight is sponsoring whatever whatever we get into tonight pretty cool stuff i love their stuff love it uh, well done getting sponsors. You deserve it. Thank you. I appreciate it. We've been fortunate enough to get um, sponsors for quite a bit now, uh, especially Olight. Uh, I love it because every time we do one of these videos, which is once a month, so if you guys miss, if you guys miss this sale, we do them, we do them once a month. Um, but Olight has just continued to put these things on all of my guns, which is fantastic. The road has been busy today. Lots of traffic running up and down. Shelby, uh, Shelby left today, and while she was leaving, she called me and was like, "Hey, there is a truck that says Port Authority on it, heading uh, heading your way." So I instantly, just ran out the back door. I'm just kidding. I don't know what it was doing. Port Authority could be. Uh, who could it be? Oh, we actually have a base around here, a, a very large base that has uh, submarines in the lake, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then we're not too far from the Canadian border. I guess that would that would warrant Port, port Authority as well. Of course, they're stopped right up there. Ruin my live stream. All right, guys, what are we talking about tonight? We got our Olight stuff out of the way. Thank you, Olight. Let's uh, let's say hi to some folks in the house. We got ooh, Virginia militias in the house. There are a ton of people in here. Hit that thumbs up, guys. Appreciate you coming. I don't know what we're gonna talk about tonight. I don't ever write down what I'm going to talk about. We just get in the train and then let that thing uh, head off the rails. Also a guy practicing his airplaning up there. All right, let's see here. We got Steven Kobo says, what's up from Brooklyn? New urban prepper. Yeah, buddy, get in there. All right. Uh, Nicole Spencer says, what's up? Not much, just, you know, hanging by the fire. The biblical rumble room. They just want to force you to make a bad move. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's why we lock the gate, right? We keep them out. So you can see behind us, we are actually working on some fencing stuff. Uh, making a pasture for the cows to get more cows. It is a good time to be getting more cows because uh, cattle prices, beef prices are um, very low. So it's a good time to acquire cows. It's not a good time to be selling cows. Anyway, so we're working on this stuff, gonna fence it off, which is going to give the property more security because then someone's gonna have to come over some barbed wire if they want in. But we keep the gate locked always. Boy, there are just a ton of people. Living the dream homestead in the house. Says, get them while you can, absolutely. Holy Ozone, eight tens in the house. The doctor is in. Uh, Eric Lopez is in from uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. We got a, uh, oh, there's a high Sheriff Rick from Hoodoo Dino, okay. Saying hi to what's up, or to someone else. Uh, Matty Matt says, hard times are coming, Patriots band together. We are going to be talking about that tonight as well, guys. We're going to be talking about uh, compliance, and then I'm also going to give you guys feedback of the feedback I have been getting from all of these videos, um, talking about militia, talking about community, talking about banding together. 
uh, and it's good. It's good stuff. It's actually really cool to see. It's very hard to keep up on because my email list is it's almost impossible. I'm getting emails from all over the country. Even got one from South Africa. That guy's that guy's on his own. I'm I'm afraid. Uh, let's see here. Shore Acres Homestead in the house says I got a stimulus cow. There you go. Uh, way to feed yourself. That's we did not get any stimulus. Uh, <laughs> North Country did not get a stimulus, guys. We are. Uh, oh, I don't know why. Not poor enough, I guess. Which is weird, because we're plenty poor enough. Uh, Teddy B says headed up to North Idaho tomorrow from Boise, looking to buy a little property. Fantastic. Uh, for uh, for those of you who don't know. My wife is a real estate agent. You can send us an email if you are serious about buying. If you are looking for someone to take you on a tour through North Idaho just for the fun of it, don't call my wife. She's got shit to do. Uh, Jeffrey Hansen in the house. Nicole Spencer. Oh, I think we already said hi to you. How'd you get hit twice? Good job. Bob's Adventures in the house. Brittany Leon is in. Curious. With some states opening back up, do you think things will still get pretty bad? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's just go off the rails on that question right there. Uh, yeah, so here's, 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 here is my conspiracy theory uh, slash take on it. We are going to open up. Some people are going to open up. Unfortunately, in places like Chicago and even Boise, um, apparently they are implementing mayors, um, governors, they are implementing laws, rules, right? Laws as if they can, um, they are implementing things like, uh, you have to stay six feet from each other. You have to, uh, you can't hold hands in public, uh, can no more than two people at a time. If you guys watched the, um, I think she's the mayor of Chicago she has already told people, if you are, uh, if you are going to be at a party, we are coming to bust you. We're coming for you. So any groups, uh, they're coming for you, which is good. If you're going to be in a group, um, that's where you're going to want to be if they're coming for you, is in a, in a very big group. James Freeman in the house says, production has been shut down worldwide for over a month. That has massive effects. Uh, we haven't been, uh, we haven't begun to see. Absolutely. Um, and so here's here's part of this. One is like stimulus checks, right? People are still going to look to, uh, they're going to look to government to send them more money to pay those back bills. Uh, statistically speaking, most people do not have um, more than one month's worth of bills saved up. They, ju they just don't, right? That's just part of it. I got ash falling on me. Um, so those people who did not pay their bills are now behind and now if they go back to work, they are now behind, but they are now, uh, you know, working to continue on, but they're still behind, right? So who bails you out? You look to the government to bail you out. Um, this causes issues, guys. This causes us to be dependent on government bailouts. And, and they're not bailouts, okay? So don't, don't get that twisted. They're not bailouts. They are our money that they're taking from us and taking in different places. And then they are giving it to us because they shut us down. And then they will later make us pay that back to them to do whatever it is they do. Give themselves raises and stuff. I, got, I missed a super chat here, guys. I got to run back up here really quick. Um, if you're going to throw money at me, I want to make sure I... I, uh, I read your super chat. Din Jiren. I butchered it, man. I'm sorry. How do we stand up to this tyranny? Here's how you stand up to the tyranny, my friends. The way tyranny works and the way it seems to be working currently is it seems to be more of a suggestion at this point. Um, like here locally, Bonner County seems to be doing really great, which is the county that I live in. We're very close to Kootenai County. What Kootenai County is doing is they're buying into the bullshit. So what they're doing is the sheriff that is there, who is luckily on his way out, uh, the sheriff that is there is having his guys go out and enforce the, the governor's uh, clearly unconstitutional and illegal um, enforcement. 
laws. I don't even know what you want to call it. They're not, they're not a law. He just made some shit up and now expects everyone to follow it. The problem is, is these guys are going out and they're handing out their little notice and they're doing it under the guise of education and they have ticketed people for it as well. But we're already seeing in other states, for one attorney general uh, has come out and said that it's unconstitutional and, and they're thinking about um, filing suit against uh, all of these governors that are doing it. So if you guys get a ticket, don't pay it. Uh, two, um, they seem to be, or in, in these other places, we've seen a salon owner get arrested and then the governor, uh, the governor is calling for her release. So what you're seeing is these little towns kind of doing their own thing. And then as it gets higher up uh, to some people, you're seeing that they're saying, hey, this is unlawful. We're going to get sued. You need to release these people um, as well as um, these fines are going away. So we're seeing that it's unconstitutional and when it comes to the enforcement time, right now they're suggest suggesting with a little bit of enforcement, um, if you resist it, there's not too much they can do. If you can resist it in numbers, you're even better off. If you can resist it with your community, then you're set. And I'll, I'll give you guys an example. We talked to a few people here that ran barber shops. Um, and we were uh, we were letting them know that we're here to support you if you want to open we will bring community together and we will come and support you and we will be there so that you are not alone uh, one of the issues that you see in licensing and regulation is that you know they were worried that well if we get past this point we're worried that the state will then the state will then um, pull their license and stop them from being able to work in the future, right? So it's it's kind of one of those things like where you get in trouble and then your parents ground you later when they figure it out. Uh, it's that sort of thing. So the answer to that and the answer to the long answer that we're getting to is you got to band together. So for all of those people who own salons and barber shops and anyone else that needs to get that, um, that type of license, you guys all need to band together as a community all of you in the same, like it have a meeting once a month, right? Come together, be organized, and then tell the state we're not going to comply. And then you have options. One is the state is going to realize like, oh, everyone in this town is willing to eat our, our licensing, right? Then you can continue to just operate without the licensing, right? And then if you have a constitutional sheriff or they're not going to come and lock your doors down, uh, if you have communities stopping people from locking your doors down, then you're you're set as well. So it comes down to, you know, I hate to say it, but it comes down to whoever's got the larger group. That's it. If you're one person on your own standing up, you know they're bringing a team to squash you, whether that's government, whether that's law enforcement. If your team is bigger than their team, then you have to have a conversation and generally speaking, when the bigger team outnumbers the littler team, the littler team loses. Um, and that's something that we need, to, we need to band together and do. One of the biggest issues that I've seen is that there are tons of people who are afraid to be the tip of the spear. They, are, they do not want to stick their neck out. They do not want to be that person out in front who then gets, you know, squashed first or, you know, is the first one into the fray. The problem is, is that there's not enough of those people. Those people are out there. But when those people are out there and you see them, the rest of you need to support. You can't just sit back and let somebody else do the supporting because I think that things are going to be getting worse. Uh, even though we are going back to work, you know, tentatively, we're seeing... We're seeing these draconian laws be put into place, uh, totally unconstitutional, totally un-American. But the thing is, is they will do it if we allow them to do it. So it is up to us to not, uh, not allow them to do it. So guys, that means that, that means that we need to band together. You need to stick together. Which brings me to my topic. You got to you got to find a group, right? You got to find people whether whether it is your big group or little group You should have a little group inside your big group Okay, you should for one if you guys are militia minded you guys should have your small teams We've talked about El Gop right little group of Patriots We've talked about this small team concept of where you have four five three four five um, Good people that you trust around you who can come to your aid 
and you can go to their aid as well in a time of need. Whether that need is food or that need is a fire or that need is uh, you know emotional support or if that need is you know full kit magazines full rifle on the shoulders whatever that is you need to have that that's your core from that point on guys you need to get involved in your community whether that is militia or a community group whatever it is right now is so important to do it it is the most important time in probably anyone's history uh, who is alive in this chat. It is the most important time to get off your ass and get involved. Okay, get into a group, start training, start building relationships. Because here is the thing: if it comes down to that, just that, just flashing light of okay, it's going down. Full-fledged tyranny, right? We're seeing it. It's starting to come, guys. Full-fledged tyranny. Do you want to be the bottom man on the totem pole? Do you, do you want to be the least trained guy? Do you want to be the least prepared person just standing around being like, what do I do? Hey, what do we do? Right? You want to be at the top of the tier, guys. And that means starting now. We've got another soup chat. Let's go read it. Matthew Gentry says, $5 super chat, thank you, sir. I enjoy the fray. Put me up front. I find that level of danger exciting and worthwhile. There you go, guys. Uh, talk to Matthew Gentry. You just found yourself a, a spear tip. I myself, uh, I, I kind of find me in that same position as well, for one, because I, w I will not be bullied by anybody. Um, two, I choose to live peacefully. Um, out here left alone, right? But if you come to my door uh, You can absolutely guarantee that I'm going to meet you at the threshold and I'm going to push back And we've you guys have seen all this stuff. I've documented unless you're new to the channel Every time I've ever had an issue has been somebody coming to my property and telling me I owe them something Or telling me I'm going to do something or them wanting something from my property it is the only time you have ever seen issues on this channel is somebody coming here here and telling me that I owe them something. And then this guy just flying around. Mike Vetromiel. Sorry for butchering it, buddy. Says, I live in North Idaho. Uh, I hope you found a group, man. If you're looking for a group, reach out to me. If anyone on here is looking to be a part of Idaho Three Percenters, let me know. Um, I'll put you in contact with who you need to be put in contact with. If you guys are looking to be part of Militia, I've made contacts with um, multiple throughout the state now. I can put you in contact with regulated Militia in the state of Idaho. Whoever, whoever you want to be a part of, be a part of somebody, okay? Be a part of the solution. Don't be a part of the problem, guys. And if you're not involved, you are not part of the solution, okay? You are part of the problem if you are inactive, if you're not involved in the politics, and if you are not involved in community, unfortunately, you are in fact part of the problem. The days of just sitting out in the woods being left alone just doesn't happen anymore, okay? They will come knocking on your door. Currently, right now, the county is still coming after my land, right? They're still coming after this land. They want this land. They want this whole area. They've come back in to try and rezone this whole thing again as it's being developed. Um, after all of the landowners in this area, people who reside here, we all went and told them no. Uh, told them we're not interested in you changing it. And they're changing it, right? They're going to try and move it again from Ag 20 uh, to uh, Rural Fives, right? So that they can make more tax revenue. Right? They're coming for it. So you've got ag land, your farmland, right? And they are going to destroy it for money. And what are we seeing right now, guys? We are seeing the food chain being disrupted, uh, and it doesn't, it doesn't click in their head. The food chain is being disrupted. What does that mean? There are not a, there's not enough food being produced to the consumers who are you know broke because they shut us down, right? So the food chain is being disrupted. If we are taking away our agricultural land, people are not farming to provide food for all the people who are now hungry, right? What good does it do to build, uh, you know, giant places for everyone to live, your neighborhoods? What good does it do to build these giant neighborhoods if none of you can eat? 
Makes no sense. Who we get, what we we're gonna ship all our food in from out of state? Is that what we're gonna do? If we're not paying attention to AgLand, uh, we've got a big issue. That happens to be an issue up here in North Idaho. Um, I don't know if that's an issue where you guys are at. It's definitely something you should look into. I know we all go to the store and there's food there, but we need to make sure that that food still has that supply line coming in, that these farmers still have that stuff. Um, and part of the problem is, is less and less people farm, right? There are, there are less people farming because farming's a thankless job. People don't want to do it and then, you know, make very little, um, it's just a thankless job. Most people get out and make more money that farming is going to allow you to make because farming's a simple life, right? You get up, you tend to your animals, you do your thing. And for some people that is, I mean, that is a dream, right? Absolute dream to be able to do. But for some people, you know, it's about the money and it's about that culture of having more stuff, more things we don't need, you know, bigger houses that it's too much room for all of us, you know, five cars out in the driveway, right? Being able to get all of that stuff. So there's definitely a culture issue. But when we're all starving, we will buy whatever the government is selling. We'll buy it all. We'll take it. Well, we will take anything as soon as we are starving. Hiya, Dixie. You gotta go though, you can't, can't hang out with me. You're not in on this. I can't even see how many we got in here, guys. 632 in the house. I'm gonna start reading some of your guys' questions uh, instead of just going off. Breaking free off grid with a $10 super chat. Says, I just wanted to give you money. Ha ha, fantastic. Uh, we'll buy some ammo with it. We'll make it, we'll make it worth it, right? S. Moore in the house says, what's up? Wes Warren says, what's coming when we are old? Fight now or forever, hold your peace. Ooh. All right, we'll keep talking about it, okay? What Wes just said is very important, guys. I want everyone to understand this. Um, probably, um, you know, my grandpa, probably many of your grandpas and or dads and moms, um, they already fought for all of this, okay? They already fought for all of this. This has been fought for many times, but the problem is, is we didn't fight to maintain it, okay? We fought for it, we took it, and then we allow scumbags to get into politics and we allow them to start pulling strings. We allowed this to happen, and it is up to us. It is up to us to fight for it. Or you can turn and look at your kids right now, whatever they're doing, probably playing and enjoying their life. If you're not fighting for it right now, those kids are gonna be fighting for it in the future or those kids are gonna be mindless slaves that do whatever they're told. So for those of you who are just like, you're right on the edge, you're just kind of waiting on the edge of your seat, just saying like, ah, oh, I wanna do something, but what should I do? Go join your local militia. Go join your local group of people who are actually going to stand up and make a difference. They are out there. I know in the state of Idaho, they are loud. Um, go join them, guys. Go join them, okay? Go out and train, learn to shoot your gun. I know that stuff is not fun. Run around a little bit, right? Learn new stuff. Get a little more educated. Get a little bit smarter. Learn the Constitution. Understand what you are fighting for. I mean, really understand what it is you're fighting for. It's very easy to fight when you know what the rules are. And when you know what the Constitution says, and you know what the other team's doing, you know you can kick ass without it being an issue, right? It's easy. It's simple stuff. They, they made it so third graders can read the Constitution. They made it so you can understand. Go read it all. Then get fired up, okay? When you've got, when you've got local police enforcing rules saying that you cannot assemble or that you can only have two to a group in public, that you can't travel unless you have a reason for traveling. No, no, that doesn't work. That's not, that's not the way that this operates. And anyone, anyone who is acting under the color of law telling you that you can't travel in this country unless you have a reason is no longer legally operating. Okay, that, that might as well be any person with a costume on, any person that they no longer have any authority 
the moment you start hearing stuff that is contradictive to the Constitution, okay? Contradictive to the Bill of Rights. That is the end-all, be-all. Learn that stuff. You don't, need a, you don't need a degree in law to understand that stuff, okay? Those are the laws. Those are the rules. Learn them and enforce them. Sheriff Rick in the house. Oh, Sheriff Rick is in the house, guys, and Sheriff Rick says militia and 3% will be a major part of my office, Sheriff's Posse. Sheriff Rick is, uh, as far as I have seen from what I've watched and heard of the race for sheriff in Kootenai County, Sheriff Rick is the guy we want in there, and I'll give you a couple of reasons, okay? I have been to a rally. I think I've been to a couple rallies where Sheriff Rick has been at. I have seen that he has been involved as in other rallies, uh, calling all of this unconstitutional. None of those other sheriff candidates have, have come out and publicly said, publicly said that this stuff is unconstitutional. Sheriff Rick has said that he would never enforce this kind of stuff. None of the other candidates that I'm aware of have come out and said that. I also know this, that when an institution, we talked about this, right? Government, uh, media, right? The government establishment, when they come out and tell you who their horse is, when they come out and say, this is the guy we want, this is the guy we're going to endorse, don't pick that guy, okay? Don't pick that guy. When you have a sheriff's department that is trampling your rights and they say, we want this guy, we like this guy, don't pick that guy, okay? That guy is the problem. If that is their horse, do not bet on that horse. Do not vote for that horse, okay? Or we will have more of the same and nothing will change. Uh, so shout out to Sheriff Rick. Good luck, sir. Um, uh, I, I'm in Bonner County. Otherwise, I would vote for you. Uh, but I, I operate in Kootenai County quite a bit. So it does affect me. And I hope to see you as the sheriff of that county. I do not... Uh, hope to see any of the other candidates in that county. I sure as shit do not want to see some guy from California come up here and then just get voted in. Californians come up here and they bring their Californication up here. And whether or not they say they're conservative, uh, pretend to not be liberal, whatever it is, it is not Idaho conservative. Stop putting Californians into office in Idaho, ladies and gentlemen. You ruin the culture of Idaho when you bring new culture in. Get rid of them. Sheriff Rick says, you have a great sheriff in Wheeler. Absolutely, I agree, uh, Sheriff Wheeler. You know when you run on constitutional rights? What, what else is there, right? Constitution first, everyone should be happy. I don't know. Um, Mike says, Whitehead or Norris? It's Whitehead. You want Whitehead. Norris is the guy from California. Not interested. All right, who's got questions? Did we miss a super chat, guys? If we did, I apologize. I get to ranting and the chat is flying. We're gonna go for about two more minutes, guys. We're gonna keep it, uh, we're gonna keep it at a half hour. Uh, Nathaniel Dobbins, $5 super chat. Thank you, sir. Says, our kids will not win. They will be radically disarmed by comparison and fighting unmanned drone technology. I, I mean, I can't agree with you more, man. I think that, I think as technology and the level of corruption at the top tier of our government continues to grow, uh, our, uh, yeah. Skynet, right? The Terminator. Sounds ridiculous, right? But they're already developing uh, robot soldiers. Could you imagine that shit being on the streets? And then our kids are supposed to deal with that? Technology's getting worth, worse. We're seeing drones being implemented. Uh, and I forget what state it was. I think it was New Jersey. I don't know. You guys let me know in the comments if it was New Jersey. Sorry for pointing at you. Um, uh, but they're using drones to hover over people and tell them what to do, tell them to disperse, right? It's very, uh, very advanced. Um, I don't see anyone putting it in, so we'll just pretend it's New Jersey. They seem like they're very um, not pro-Constitution there. Uh, lots of AI technology. Michael2003 with $2 super chat. Thank you, sir. Says, I just found out about Ruby Ridge from you. You just found out what Ruby Ridge is? Um, if you did, you're welcome. 
um, part of history, big part of history, big part of Northern Idaho. It's a big part of Northern Idaho, um, you know, and, and, and it's, it's a, a, an example of just gross negligence, uh, horrible operation of feds for the smallest thing. And the sad thing about it, guys, you know, if, if somebody breaks the law, and then, you know, the, the law enforcement goes in and takes that person's life. It's a little easier to say, well, you know, you broke the law and it escalated and then your life was taken, right? Because we become jaded by, by lives being taken, right? It's like, well, should have complied. But for innocent people to be murdered uh, is, uh, it's sad. It's really sad. And we become very jaded by watch. We watch people get murdered all the time on TV and in movies. You know, so we, we become so complacent with it. We, we become so de desensitized with it. So it's just part of, you know, with Facebook, it's just part of scrolling past the next whatever, right? We don't invest ourselves in it because we're not invested into our community. We need to get out into our community. We need to be willing to protect our neighbors because we love our neighbors, right? That is the point. If you know your neighbor, you will protect your neighbor, when we don't know our community, we don't know our neighbors, when we are stuck inside watching entertainment and programs, right? We're not part of community anymore. We're not building it. It is important to get out and build it. Go find some people you don't know and make friends. There's a theme to this whole thing. Um, answer my question. Oh, that's not for me. <clears throat> Odd and interesting, says I remember Ruby Ridge. Uh, John says, Militia groups, we need to arrest corrupt politicians. Citizens arrest. Yeah, this is, let's go off on this a little bit. This is the tricky thing about it, guys, is we are, we are a nation of laws and liberty and justice for all, right? But we continually see the people at the top are untouchable. So what is our recourse? What do we do? What do we do when we watch Hillary Clinton not get arrested? What do we do when we watch when we see uh, Jeffrey Epstein get murdered inside of his own cell? Not that he didn't deserve it, but the fact that you know no one went to jail for that. What do we see when we see you know these these just corrupt individuals, uh, you know? creating these diseases and then releasing these diseases and then charging a bunch of money for your, your mandatory vaccinations. Like, why are we allowing this stuff to happen? And part of the problem is, is we forget. So much stuff comes down the line that we just move on to the next one, right? Like, we just scroll to the next whatever. The problem is, is we don't remember. And so we don't get pissed off enough and we don't stay pissed enough, right? And so politicians... They know that they can just kind of move on to the next whatever and everyone will shut up and leave the last whatever alone. I don't know what the solution to that is. Uh, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know what that is. You know, the fact that we see these dirty politicians and, and every time they seem to go to prison, they, they like get pardoned and let right back out. I don't know. So, uh, you know, for, for us, the little guy, you know, we have to go to court and get ground into the system. Uh, but for those above the law, you know, they don't ever see they don't ever see bars. I don't know. Sounds like tyranny. Uh, Joseph says, uh, the movie Boondock Saints. Who's with me? There you go. Joseph's getting proactive. Um, Idaho does have state taxes. Idaho does have state taxes. Idaho likes to tax you for your stuff. Idaho likes to tax you for everything. Uh just fantastic right we just jack up the taxes and this is part of having uh, shitty politicians like our tax assessor up here she's really shitty um, they, they'll basically ruin your taxes jack it way up to get you to comply to let them into your property which is fun we paid more in taxes this year our taxes has have gone up but i'm not going to let them into my property so if your way of trying to get me to comply is uh raising my taxes i'll pay a little more in taxes you're not getting onto my property one thing that they did uh to a friend was they saw that she had one of those water tanks you know like the water storage tanks that a lot of people will feed stock out of or whatever they charged her 13 grand 
in value on a tank that costs like 800 bucks, charged her $13,000 in value to jack up her taxes. And they had told her, well, we just assume you have some kind of an irrigation system, so that's why we did it. Who's in charge around here? You see a tank worth a couple hundred bucks and you, you put a $13,000 value on it? They're garbage. Absolutely garbage. Guys, we went way over our time limit here. Odd and Interesting said, uh, Randy sued and won. They all sue and they all win. It happens every time. Um, Boston Tea Party, yup. 898 we or A98 Wheeler says extortion. Yes, it is. Jeffrey says no mask, no test, no vaccine. Uh, and then any real plans to stop the vaccination nonsense? Uh, the back forty two dollars super chat. Thank you. Says the entire government government needs a reset. Um, we need some change, guys. We need some change. Uh, and my lovely wife puts in here spying on us through the sky. Yeah, that's what they did is they have to go to satellites to look into our property because you cannot gain physical access to my property. So. Uh, I guess using the satellites to look down into someone's stuff is acceptable behavior. You know, and it's only acceptable behavior if we allow that to be um, acceptable behavior. Right? But but we don't keep our politicians in check. And that's something that we definitely need to do is, is keep our politicians in check by watching them. Stop re-electing people. Stop re-electing people that are in... Um, office year after year after year. You guys know Nancy Pelosi is worth $500 million? How'd you make all that money? I'm sure there's zero corruption. My kombucha's delicious, babe. <clears throat> Let's see here. S. Purcell says, you have quite a few viewers tonight. The most I think you have ever had on the live stream. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's probably pretty close. I don't keep track of the numbers, S. Purcell. As long as you are here, that's all that matters. Let's see here. What were we talking about? I always get sidetracked on the super chats. Chinese blue helmets will come when the smoke clears. I don't think the Chinese will come. Blue helmets, maybe. Uh, I don't know. If you guys think that uh, United Nations, you guys think the United Nations, you guys think if we'll see blue helmets um, on home soil, put a one in the chat. You can put a two in the chat if you don't think we'll see blue helmets in the U.S., Matthew Gentry with another $5 super chat says, how much do you think she will be worth during the apocalypse? <laughs> yeah. Solid point, right? No real skills, you know, just hung out extorting people. Ooh, there's some ones in there. There's some twos. It's iffy. Let's just be ready either way. Lila Newton with the $50 super chat. Thank you, Lila. Says, we are packing up and heading back home. Lila was on a bug out mission, and I can guarantee that you guys have learned a ton of lessons um, in your, your little adventure. I can guarantee you guys have took a lot away from that. And uh, if you choose to go again, or if you have to go again, I can guarantee you guys are going to be much more squared away the second time. Thank you so much for the $50 super chat. We will be buying guns. We'll be buying guns with tonight's Super Chats. Uh, Dolores Todd says, Pope, Rome behind one world order religion. There's a lot of talk about it. There's a lot of talk about it. I myself prefer freedom of religion. Ozzy Alchemist says, the UN has no credit after Bush gave them the finger and went into Iraq looking for fake WMDs. Yeah, nobody ever really does anything. That's kind of the problem is, you know, 
the world stage doesn't hold governments accountable. They're not going to hold America accountable. Who is going to hold America accountable, right? So the world stage doesn't do anything. We will certainly go in and drop bombs in any country that we want to go into and drop bombs on, right? Um, and then you see here, nobody really holds the upper echelon of, uh, of government. I, I can't get out a, a sentence when I'm trying to read. Uh, no, nobody holds the upper echelon of government responsible for their actions as well, right? Everyone is just, you know, we're kind of cowards. We do need some citizens arrest probably. That would probably fix a lot of stuff. Uh, Teflon One says, we should have nothing to do with the UN. I agree. They are strictly warmongers, useless. Yeah, uh, yeah, just pull funding. Stay away from them. Uh, they can go do their own thing as long as they stay out of our country. The Back 40, uh, with a $5 super chat, thank you, says, what is worth, what is worse, China blue helmets or black clad turds that swarm our big cities? Well, China blue helmets are not an issue on, on American soil. However, uh, people who just mindlessly follow orders and are willing to collect that paycheck, uh, that's the threat. That is, that is the problem we are seeing right now. Those are the people enforcing tyranny. Those are the people enforcing, you know, the, this... Uh, and it's just lack of education, guys. It's them not. A, it's two things. It's lack of education. One, I think that they don't even understand what they're doing. Maybe I'm being optimistic. And two is paycheck, right? People want paychecks. They want their families taken care of. They want to make sure that they are going to earn their paycheck. It is a a self um, uh, self protection, right? Self first. I'm going to look out for me first. And then everything else, and that the, you know that conflicts when you take an oath. Uh, for some people, for some people, you know they they are uh, they are doing the right thing. Uh, watched a video of a police officer speak out, and it's like, do put that guy in charge. Those are the kinds of people you need in charge, so that the people below them can look up to that leadership and say, hey, that's the right. Yeah, cool. I, they're not going to force me to go against the people to earn a paycheck to feed my family. That's why you need to elect good sheriffs. That's why you need to uh, elect good uh, representatives. That's why, that's, why, that's why electing good people is the point. And I know a lot of people say, I know a lot of people say that, that, that voting does not matter. In a lot of states, I can understand that. Uh, but voting does matter. You have to get the right people in. Uh, Scott Jackson says, is the state of Idaho a Republican state? In the state of Idaho, everybody runs as Republican. Uh, Democrats, really shady Republicans, um, they all run as Republican. So yes, it's a Republican state, but everyone runs as a Republican for the most part. Uh, I believe Boise is pretty well Democrat openly, you know, and that's because they get that influx of Californians coming in. It's all the Californians' fault. All right, guys, uh, that is 43 minutes of your lives you'll never get back. Uh, we are going to end it. I appreciate you guys hanging out. I appreciate the super chats. Uh, we're going to stick all those in a little, a little jar, and then we're going to go buy something that goes bang with that. Why not, right? Uh, thank you all. Uh, for being here, thank you all for watching the channel. Thank you all for hitting the thumbs up, pushing that subscribe button. Uh, and thank you very much for all of you guys who share the videos. That helps us grow tremendously. We are creeping up on that 100,000 subscriber mark where they send me my little silver play button plaque. That's been the goal, right? Eye on the prize. Uh, and with that, when we hit that 100K, you guys are going to want to be here because we are going to be giving away a, uh, a bunch of stuff to make it fun. So thank you guys so much for supporting the channel and hanging out with me tonight. My fire, my fire's garbage.